How's it going out there, everybody? Welcome to the Mindful Music Maker live stream. Let me set this guitar down for a sec and get settled in here. Grab my water. Well, welcome back. I believe this is episode four or something like that. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. I'm going to stop counting here after a while anyways. But in case this is your first time joining us here, the Mindful Music Maker live stream is just dedicated to exploring this thing that's often referred to as mindfulness. Um, a lot of traditions and, and philosophical practices around the world have kind of um, put this at the center of their philosophy and teachings. And I think it's uh, the this concept has a lot to offer musicians. So each week here we're just exploring some maybe techniques or exercises that can help us be a little more mindful and uh, in the moment and and just get a lot more enjoyment out of playing music and being musicians, no matter what level we are. I'm going to head over here and check out the chat box real quick. I see Lewis is out there joining us. Hey, Lewis. Good to see you, man. It's uh, awesome to have you back with us. Got Evansville, Indiana in the house. That's great. Um, well, uh, before I go any further, uh, that tune that I just played was St. Anne's Reel. That's a, a Canadian traditional fiddle tune that bluegrassers and old-time musicians have kind of picked up here in the States. Um, and also, too, I just want to remind you that if you are watching with us live here, that you can type any questions or comments that you have in the chat box, and I'd be happy to kind of engage you in conversation or answer any questions if, if uh, I've got the answers to them. One thing that I always try to iterate here on the Mindful Music Maker live stream is that I am, first and foremost, a musician. I uh, have grown up playing bluegrass and all that kind of stuff and mindfulness is something that's really new to me. So I'm still kind of figuring out my own mindfulness practice but um, some of the techniques that I'm, I show you in the live streams here are just kind of tools that I've learned from greater teachers than me and uh, tools that have actually really helped me out in my own personal practice. Um, today uh, though uh, you may have noticed the title if you you know signed up for notifications on the live stream or anything like that the title is under pressure and we're actually going to be uh, um, using our, our bodies and our instruments to kind of uh, figure out the appropriate uh, level of pressure that we need to be applying to either frets or if you're a vocalist maybe to kind of um, you know sing and, and stuff like that um, but before we go ahead and, and get into any of today's discussion, um, I always like to start the stream off with a short meditation. And today we're actually going to bump it up a few minutes longer than we did last time. Um, I see Marion's joining us. Hey, Marion, good to see you out there. Um, you joined us just in time, Marion, because we're getting into what's my favorite part of, of each of the Mindful Music Maker live streams. Um, part of the reason I do this live stream is to kind of keep myself accountable in my own mindfulness practice. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of you have probably heard this before, right? The best way to like learn something is to teach it. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm kind of like learning along with you guys here, but I'll be your guide maybe. Um, the uh, uh, Buddhist would call it your meditation umse here. So I think uh, what we're going to do now is just do a, a short guided meditation. I'll say some stuff to kind of keep us uh, on track and bring our mind back to the body. Um, we're going to do five minutes today, which, holy crap, people sign in onto YouTube to sit in silence for five minutes. What is more weird than that, right? Um, <laughs> but uh, just in case you haven't joined us for a meditation before, let's kind of get into a, a proper or a, at least a, a good relaxed position with our bodies. If you're sitting in a chair, I would suggest kind of sitting on the forward of that chair. You want a, a curve in the lower part of your back. And you want both feet flat on the ground and your knees at kind of like a 90 degree angle. Just something relaxed and normal sitting position. Um, and by normal, I mean what you should look like when you're sitting, not how you actually sit at work. If you're like me, you're always doing this. So the biggest thing that I always tell people to get into a proper uh, meditation position, you've all heard this before if you've been with me, is to pretend there's a string attached to the crown of your head, kind of that point right at the back and you want that to, to feel like someone is gently tugging up and lifting that string toward the ceiling. Um, what this does, you know, if I, if I get my string, what it does, you probably saw that, my shoulders went back and it kind of accentuates that lumbar curve in my lower back. Um, also, you may want to tuck your chin ever so slightly. We want to have like our, our eyes on the horizon, but as we're meditating, we want to look down at the ground. So, find that string in the top of your head, Tuck your chin a little bit, get those shoulders back, 
You want to feel relaxed. Don't be in a rigid position or anything like that. If it's uncomfortable, you know, you don't want that. All right, and I like to set my hands on my knees. Take a big deep breath in. Breath out. And here we go, folks. I'm starting the meditation timer now. We're going for five minutes and 10 seconds. Take those first 10 seconds to just kind of get your body into the right position here. So one thing you'll notice as we go along this meditation is that your mind is going to wander and the point of the meditation is to be in the present moment, not bogged down by any thoughts you're having. So the easiest thing to do is count out breaths. So in, out, and that's one. Two. three, and so on. See if you can keep track of how many breaths you take for the entire five minutes. If you get lost, no worries. Just start over at one. notice any sounds or anything in your immediate environment that's distracting you, see if you can use that as a tool to bring yourself back into the present moment. Don't have to fight it, just notice. Come back to the breath. you're counting breaths, see if you can notice any tension that you're holding in your body. Take your mind's eye and scan from the top of your head, down to your jaw, neck and shoulders, back, thighs, feet, if you notice any tension just breathe into it, no big deal, just notice.
whenever I go to Buddhist meditation, they always have one of those singing bowls that they kind of tap three times, right? But I think some harmonics on the guitar, that's good enough, right? Just like a singing bowl. <laughs> If you're joining us uh, in the chat there, I, I would love to hear how you uh, how you did on that meditation. Um, you know, you can kind of rate yourself on a scale from 1 to 10. I think that's an easy way to do it. 10 meaning that you were able to kind of stick with the breath and uh, not really be distracted by too many thoughts. 1 being that you weren't even sure you really meditated <laughs> for that entire 5 minutes. Um, so I would love to hear from you in the chat box. Um, if you have any thoughts on that stuff. And, and while you're typing that, I'm going to get the guitar back on so we can talk about pressure and tension. I always like to say that tension is our worst enemy. Hey, Marion's got a seven there. That's great, Marion. Really good number. I would honestly... I always say this when I'm doing these live streams, my meditations are terrible because I'm like trying to guide you guys and still remain mindful and all that kind of stuff. But I, I would I would call myself like a four <laughs> on that one maybe. I counted some breaths. I know I counted at least 10 total in there. That's great. Awesome. Well, today, like I said, the, the title of the live stream is Under Pressure. And a lot of you that follow me here are, are fretted instrument players or string players, I should say. Uh, maybe you play the fiddle or something like that. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm just seeing some comments coming in here. <laughs> Marion said she can fall asleep during the meditation. Yeah, that's one danger, right? Uh, I actually, you know what? Before I dive into my, my tool about pressure here, let's talk about that for a second, Marion, because that's a really interesting point. Um, the kind of meditation coach that I was working with for a while, his name is Adam Berner. He's actually got a really great podcast called Lama to Boot, and it's about like connecting Buddhism and like Buddhist practice and thought with the music of the band Fish. <laughs> he's a real big fish, fish guy. And if you saw Adam out in public, you might mistake him for me because he's another bald, beardy guy. Um, but uh, he he always. Uh, says in some of our meditation practices, like when he's leading meditations, that the kind of where you set your gaze in your meditation can actually help, um, you know, I, th I think the kind of idea is that the higher you set your eyes, the more alert you're going to be, and the lower you set your eyes, the more kind of like calm and serene you're going to be. So if you're feeling sleepy, you know, and you're, and you're staring at the floor, Adam would say to simply kind of lift your gaze to maybe the horizon or even higher, you know, look at the ceiling. And that can kind of help you from from nodding off because I've definitely nodded off in a few meditation sessions before. That's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, yeah. Oh, whoa. And Lewis says his wife Becky had an eight. Nice. Look at that. Good job, Becky. I think Becky does some mindfulness stuff, though. I believe Lewis has mentioned that before. That's cool, Becky. Um, but yeah, if you're having trouble with like, uh, you know, feeling sleepy or anything like that in the meditation, just remember that your gaze can kind of help you, you know, so maybe lift your gaze. And conversely or inversely or however you want to say that, if you're feeling like the monkey mind, uh, a lot of people say, right, like you're all over the place and your thoughts are everywhere, try lowering that gaze even more. Um, so I, I think, you know, it can work both ways that way. That's that's kind of a tip from Lama Adam Burner. Check out his podcast, Lama Taboo. You guys will like that one. Um, so let's let's get back to that topic uh, of the stream for today, under pressure. This is something that I, I use as a mindfulness exercise with the instrument in my hands. Um, and if you were with us last time, you'll know that we did the meditation with the guitar, mandolin, or whatever your instrument was in the hands. I think that's always a good idea if you're doing this with the, the specific purpose of kind of remaining more mindful in the moment uh, as you're playing music. Um, so, so now... What, what I would say is grab your instrument and, and kind of prepare to do these exercises with me. So if you're a guitarist, mandolinist, fiddle player, this is all going to apply to you tonight. And if you're a singer, we might have some exercises that can kind of, um, we can use that are analogous to what we're going to do tonight. So if you're a singer or anything, just let me know in the chat. But I'm going to be speaking mostly to kind of like fretted instrument players. Um, one of the, the kind of big things that I think gets away from us and, and you know, is a result of not being mindful while we have a fretted instrument in our hands 
is the amount of tension that we hold in our bodies and thereby the amount of pressure that we apply to the strings in the left hand of the instrument or how hard we pick through the strings with our right hand. So um, one thing that I think we can do tonight is, is kind of a, a simple little exercise um, to determine the minimum amount of pressure that's needed in order to actually get any note to sound on your instrument and then after that the minimum amount of pressure that it takes for your right hand to pick through a string and Lewis says in the chat that that he uh, plays and sings here that's totally right so Lewis for you kind of an equivalent to this exercise that I just mentioned would be to kind of see how little breath and breath support it takes to get any single note to sound in your voice. We might mess around with that at the end after we do some pressure exercises with the left and the right hand. Um, but, but in case we don't, that's how you practice this kind of technique with, uh, with that mindful mentality. So if you're playing a guitar or a mandolin, I'm gonna stand up so you can see my hands a little better. Um, let's go ahead and just pick I know on the guitar and mandolin, we both have an E string. So let's stick with the E string for now, because all the notes that I'm going to name will be the same for us, uh, no matter what frets we're on. So if you're on that E string, let's actually start with the right hand. And see, so I like to just rest the pick on the string gently, and then slowly apply pressure. See how much it takes to get it through that string. So you want to just kind of like think about how you normally pick through the string with your alternate picking technique or whatever. Now rest that pick on the string again and just with, with as little tension in your right hand and right arm and everything, see how much pressure it takes before that pick slips through the string. And just really think about the feeling in your right hand and your right wrist and right forearm. I know this seems like a really basic exercise, but we're kind of recalibrating our bodies, you know? We're doing a diagnostic test here. This isn't, isn't playing music. This is something entirely different. One more time. Just try it again. Mess around with it a little bit. And do it with an upstroke, too. Upstrokes are always weaker, at least for me. Middle finger caught that one. And if you're picking through the string and you're like, that's still a lot of tension, see if you can actually play with a little bit less. how quiet that is that might not be the desired volume but see how how that feels to play with that little tension now follow me on this one let's see if we can keep sustained alternate picking going with that amount of tension so I'm gonna play eighth notes one and two and that kind of thing and I'll count us in a one and two and three and go and See if you can get an even sound and just focus on the feeling of the right hand through the string. If you feel any tension creeping in whatsoever, see if you can back it off without stopping. Now we've kind of calibrated our right hand. Let's talk about this guy. So I want everyone to go up to the third fret of that E string. That's a G note, in case you didn't know that. E, F, F sharp, G. Now, what I want you to do, trying to maintain that kind of loose, non-tense right hand, what I want us to do is just rest the finger on the string to where it gets that kind of dead tone, that muffled tone. And then, what I want you to do, 
as we're picking eighth notes, slowly apply pressure until you can get a note to sound, and then stop applying pressure. And notice how much tension it takes in your left hand to do that. So let's try it again. I'm going to count us off. We'll play eighth notes in our right hand and just press down until you get a good note, okay? One, two, and ready, and go, and... And notice how little tension you need in your left hand to actually make that note sound. One, two, ready, stop. Now let's try that with each finger, and let's go up chromatically. So let's do our middle finger on the 4th fret. I'm going to just slowly apply pressure with the middle finger and see how much it takes to press that fret down. And what I'm going to do is keep that index finger down, because as I'm ascending the neck, I keep all my fingers down. So it's good to kind of, you know, train all of the fingers that are behind those, uh, those fretted notes to hold as little tension as possible as well. So find your, your G note with a little tension, and then put your middle finger on the 4th fret, and get that note to sound. And let's play that one. So let's do that again. I'll count us in. One, two, ready, and go. Okay, there we are. And in four beats, Let's put that ring finger down and see if we can do that on the fifth fret. One, two, three, four. Four more beats and then we'll do the pinky. One, two, three, four. Alright, now I will be the first to admit to you, it's, it's great because I can see these stats that you guys can't, you know, there are people signing on, people dropping off in the call, like most people that drop into the middle of this exercise are like, what in the heck is going on? This is the most boring video I've ever seen. <laughs> but check this out, in order to, to kind of maintain control of our bodies and our minds, more importantly, we have to do stuff that is just like ridiculously boring. <laughs> that's that's kind of almost the point of it, right? Usually we're, our minds are so consumed with, you know, oh, I got to learn this next tune and I got to play this arpeggio right and I got to learn this scale and I got to do this and that. And all the while, our bodies are like struggling to keep up. We're building all of this tension into our bodies without even thinking about it, right? Which is the point, you know? Increasing our mindfulness is allow us to going to, it's, it's going to allow us, excuse me, to feel these things in our body. And if we practice these exercises, like this one that I just showed you every day, a couple minutes, two minutes, then we're building a mindfulness practice into our daily habits. And we're gonna be more likely over time to notice when something is going ridiculously wrong with our body. So if you're with me here, like, just give me a, a, a yes or a no in the chat box. The, so when I do this exercise, I, I always kind of find that I need less tension than I normally play on any of the notes in order to get a good note to sound. So give me a yes if you think that's the same for you, right? A yes if you needed less tension than you thought to make those notes. I, w I would love to hear uh, some of your thoughts on that. <laughs> and a no, meaning that, you know, you play with the appropriate amount of tension all the time. I'm actually playing my C chord now to see. That, that one, because I play my C as like a four finger chord, you know? And I always just kind of like phew, clamp down on it, but it's like, when you get more than one finger moving at a time, which was kind of the point of keeping those fingers down, 
then you start to notice you're you're typically kind of just like wrenching down on that guitar neck more than you need to. Marion says she's got a yes out there, so Marion needs less tension in her notes. Yeah, Lewis says yes. I didn't feel like I was pressing the string. That's the thing that I notice with with me, you know. It doesn't even feel like. It feels like my my left hand is floating on air because normally when I'm pressing the string, I'm like pressing the string, you know. Um, but that's something to really keep in mind, folks, because like these are the things. For most of us, it's not going to lead to anything like this, but when people overdo it, that's what leads to, like, carpal tunnel and tendonitis and all these kind of crazy things that can be built up over time if you don't use proper technique. And I think a lot of people are focused on learning proper technique, you know, in terms of, like, how do you hold your hands? How do you hold the guitar? When I think proper technique could really just come back to exercises like this, checking in with your body to see if you're applying the right amount of tension on a note and if you're holding your hand a certain way does that make one other part of your body more tense where it shouldn't be you know because learning your body in that way is going to naturally lead you to proper technique and I'm not saying you shouldn't listen to teachers because most of your teachers out there already know what proper technique is but we don't always do a good job of explaining why proper technique is proper technique. You know, it's like, well, you need to curve your wrist and curve your hands and do this. And it's like, well, why? So you don't have as much tension in your body, right? And I think tension is really something that's not talked about enough with these kind of things. Um, and speaking of that, Marion says in the chat box here, I play with too much tension on both hands. I'm with you, Marion. I'm, I'm all over the place, especially... I find myself on mandolin able to use less tension with the pick. I think uh, it's because I learned mandolin later and I was already into kind of like mindfulness practices. But when I pick up the guitar, it's almost like I, I sink back into old habits a little quicker. And I like start to, you'll see my shoulder kind of wrench up into my ear and like, you know, I, I get like real tense and, and that kind of stuff. So hopefully, I know this was, like I said, it could seem like a really dumb or simple exercise today. But simple exercises are the ones that are really going to help you out when it comes to mastering tension in your body and um, just figuring out proper technique on your instrument. Um, and that being said, folks, uh, like I said, I, I try to keep these streams short and, and full of, you know, hopefully just like one tidbit of information that you can apply to your daily practice. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and leave you with that little exercise and that little tip. Um, I really appreciate Marion and Lewis for, for blowing up the chat here today. It's, it's great to, to see you folks out there. And uh, um, tune in next week because we're going to be back again. And I'm going to have another little exercise like this that we can hopefully put into our daily practice and help master a little bit of tension and make ourselves a little more mindful. Um, okay, folks, thank you so much for joining us for another Mindful Music Maker live stream. We will see you next week at 6 p.m. Eastern. Take it easy.